Welcome back families and friends. We're here for day three of our math lesson. Yesterday we started working on adding one digit numbers to two digit numbers using objects. Today we're going to knock that up a little bit and we're going to be continuing working on 1NB24, adding a two digit number to a two digit number. Now similar to yesterday, we're going to make sure that we can do this with objects. I have base 10 blocks and ones that I'm going to be using to show you how to do this, but feel free to use the manipulatives that you might have made yesterday or any other creative manipulatives and objects you have around the house. So again, we're using objects to add a two digit number to a two digit number whose sum is less than 100. So that means each of the numbers that we're adding together, those add-ins, each of those numbers are going to have a tens place and a ones place. And when we add them together, the sum, or what we get, is going to be less than 100. So let's take a look at our anchor chart that we started using yesterday. Yesterday we did two-digit addition without regrouping. Remember, regrouping is when we're making another 10. We're not doing that here. That's why we're doing two-digit addition without regrouping. That'll come a little bit later. And we focused on adding or putting together a two-digit number with a one-digit number. The way we said we could do that is by taking advantage of everything we know about place value. We can set up our two numbers, our two add-ins vertically, like this, so that way we can break our numbers apart into their tens places and their ones places. That's going to make it a whole lot easier to add our numbers together. Now yesterday we stopped at adding a one-digit number to a two-digit number. Today we're going to be adding a two-digit number to a two-digit number. So our boards or our workspaces are going to have more objects on them. But if you keep yourself organized by using a place value chart and identifying your groups of 10 and your groups of 1, it's going to be a whole lot easier. So let's get on into it. Here's our first problem. We're going to be working on 14 plus 32. Okay. so. As we said yesterday, you can write your addition problems horizontally. You can also write them vertically. Vertically just means that you're stacking them on top of each other. You're doing it up and down. So I'm going to write them vertically because that's going to help me organize my add-ins or the numbers I'm adding together in my place value chart. So once I've got my add-ins written down vertically, that's up and down, I'm going to add in my place value chart, remembering that T stands for tens, O is standing for ones. So here are the groups of 10 that I'm working with, here are the groups of leftover ones that I'm working with. Now I'm using objects today to represent what's happening in these problems and help me solve them easier. And so I'm going to take a look at my first add-in, which is 14. Now I know that 14 is made up of one group of 10 and four leftover ones, so I'm going to use my base 10 block to represent that first group of 10. I'm also going to use my cubes or my ones to show my four leftover ones. One, two, three, four. Again, trying my best to set them up in an invisible 10 frame. For our, our friends that are forgetting what a 10 frame is, remember that a 10 frame is an array. It's got rows and columns that shows you five on the top and five on the bottom. It's going to be much easier if you arrange them in that invisible 10 frame once we get to regrouping. So I've showed my representation of the number 14, one group of 10 and four leftover ones. I'm now going to move down to my next add-in, which is 32, and I'm going to represent that with my objects as well. Well, I'm going to use what I know about place value. I know that 32 is made up of three tens, one, two, three tens, and two leftover ones. One, two. Now that I've set up my objects, I'm ready to add or put this all together. The easiest way to do that, let's go back to our chart, is by moving down and you're going to add your ones, then your tens. So let's see if we can do that with our problem. Well, I know that four plus two is six. If I wasn't able to do that in my head, I could start with four and count on. Four, five, six. So four ones plus two ones is six ones. 
And then I'm going to go over to my 10 side of my place value chart. Again, I'm moving down. I know that one group of 10 from 14 plus three groups of 10 from my 32 is one, two, three, four groups of 10. I now have four groups of 10. So 14 plus 32 is 46. Now, if you're one of those friends that's saying, Miss Burns, all you have to do is count up all the tens you've got and add on your leftover ones like this, 10, 20, 30, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46. You're absolutely right. You can do it that way. Keep in mind though, that as we move forward and our problems get more complicated, moving down within our place value mat and first adding our groups, our, our ones and then our tens, is going to be a little bit easier, especially when we get to that tricky word, regrouping. Okay, let's try another one. We're gonna clear our board. I'm gonna remove my ones, removing my tens. And our next problem is 25 plus 24. Now I don't have this written out as a story problem, but I could certainly turn it into an addition story problem. Let's say that you are at the beach and you collect 25 seashells and your brother goes around and he collects 24 seashells and you guys want to put your seashells together to figure out how many you have all together. You could certainly use this strategy to help you solve that kind of problem. So I'm going to take my horizontal addition problem, 24 plus, excuse me, 25 plus 24. It could be 24 plus 25. We know the commutative property of addition allows us to add in either direction. And I'm gonna make this vertical. By making it vertical or up and down, I'm making it much easier for myself to organize my numbers into a place value mat. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and insert my place value mat. Remembering that I'm going to label T for tens, O, for once. Okay, well our job today is to use objects to help us solve addition problems where we're adding two digit numbers to more two digit numbers. All right, so let's use our objects to represent the number 25. I know 25 is made of two tens, so I'm going to grab two tens and place them next to my two. It's also composed of five ones. So I'm going to grab five ones, one, two, three, four, five, pretending they're inside that invisible 10 frame. That's going to help set me up for success when I start regrouping later in those trickier problems. So I've just represented 25, two groups of 10, five leftover ones with my objects. Now I'm going to show my second added, 24. Well, 24 is made up of two groups of 10 as well and four leftover ones. Organizing my ones as if they are in inside an invisible 10 frame. Now all I have to do is, let's go back to our chart. The easiest thing is going to be to add our ones, then our tens, moving down our place value chart. Adding my ones, then my tens. Okay. So I know that five plus four is nine, and actually this invisible 10 frame is really helping me out here because I know that if this guy were full, I'd have one more one right here, but it's just missing one one. So this must be nine. Five plus four is nine. If you weren't sure and you couldn't see your invisible 10 frame, then you can start at five and count on. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine ones. Now I'm gonna go over to my tens and I'm adding up and down, starting with the two tens and then adding my two tens from 24. Well, two plus two, that's a doubles fact. That's something that we know automatically, two plus two is four. In this case, I have 20 plus 20 or two tens plus two tens. Two tens plus two tens is four tens, which is the same as 40, but my four is in my tens place, representing those groups of 10 for me. So 25 plus 24 equals 49. Another way that friends might do it is by going ahead and counting all your groups of 10 and then your leftover ones. 10, 20, 30, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49. Or other friends are looking at this and saying, Miss Burns, you've got 40 over here, nine over on your one side, 
just add 40 plus 9, which is also 49. Great, let's do one more. We're going to clear our board. And our final problem is 41 plus 36. Again, I could put this into a story problem. Let's say that you are going out trick-or-treating and you collect 41 pieces of candy and you'd like to add your pieces of candy together with your cousin's 36 pieces of candy to find out how many you have all together. Well, we can do that. We're going to rearrange our horizontal addition problem or we're going to make it go vertical by putting it vertically or up and down. We're making it easier for our brain to organize our add-ins or the numbers we're adding together inside of a place value mat. Again, I'm labeling my tens with T for tens, my ones with O for ones. Today I'm using objects to solve these two digit addition problems. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my base 10 blocks. I know that the number four here really is telling me I have four groups of 10. So I'm gonna lay out my four groups of 10 in 41. Then I've got one left over one. Here's 41. Now I'm going to represent 36. Well, I know this three here isn't really three. It's actually three groups of 10. So I'm gonna grab three tens. Whoops. One, two, three. And then six leftover ones in the number 36. One, two, three, four, five. I'm using my invisible 10 frame. I know the top row can have five. Then I have to go to my bottom row, six. Going back to my chart, the easiest way to do this is to add my ones, then my tens. So I'm moving down my ones column, then I'm gonna move down my tens column. One plus six, well, with the commutative property of addition, I can just flip that around. That's the same as six plus one. One plus any number is just the next number. So six plus one is seven. If you weren't sure, you could certainly count on as you're adding. Now I have to add up my tens. Well, I have four tens and I'm adding that to three tens. Well, four, five, six, seven tens is the same as 70. 70 plus seven is 77. Another way that friends might do this, we've got seven tens over here. We know that's 70. You know that you've got seven ones here. You could even rearrange into your invisible 10 frame seven tens, 70 plus seven ones, seven equals 77. Okay, so friends, remember, when you are doing two digit addition without regrouping, that's when we're making another 10, we didn't have to make another 10, we didn't have to bundle anything here. It's much easier if you take your horizontal problem and arrange it vertically. Once you arrange it vertically, you can pop in your place value chart Add your ones, then your tens. And if you want to check yourself, go ahead and count up all of your objects to make sure that that equals the same sum that you got. Okay, friends, go ahead and click down underneath the video and complete your assignment there. Thanks so much for watching.